Um, what I'm going to say now is probably not uh, new for you because you are either working in geography or studying geography. Um, hydrology is the science that study the movement, distribution, quality of water in Earth. And ecology is the science that is um, studying the interactions among organisms and in their environment. But did you know that these two sciences were born out of completely opposite intellectual worldviews? Hydrology from the a Newtonian perspective of trying to simplify complexity and looking for uh, essential functions, and ecology from, from the Darwinian perspective of insisting of the complexity of nature and trying to seek uh, um, patterns within it. But the merger of these two, despite this, the merger of these two sciences has been possible. And that's been because of two major facts because of the expansion and eventual overlapping of both sciences, and because of the growing awareness of today that uh, complex environmental problems uh, facing the world are needed to be addressed in an integrative and holistic manner. So ecohydrology came from, or um, it was born by this mix of two sciences and focused on the interactions between water and ecosystems. In other words, between environmental change and water resource management. The key stock in, hydro in ecohydrology is the soil moisture. And there we have three spheres, landscape, rivers, and lakes and coasts. In the landscape, we focus on the interactions between climate, vegetation, soil, and water. In rivers, we mainly focus on the floodings, riparian vegetation, and flood dynamics affecting aquatic fauna. And in the coasts and the lakes, we focus mainly on the um, flows inputs to these reservoirs, like quantity of water and quality of water. These three spheres are interconnected with each other, and when there is an alteration in one of those, there will be a feedback in the others. Let me show you a well-known example of an alteration in the flows in the lakes. This is the Lake Aral Sea, and this is uh, located in the Central Asia, and it was desiccated because of, well, this, first of all, say that this lake was the fourth biggest uh, lake in the world. And now it's reduced only to the 10% of its original size. And that was because of this using the water to agricultural purposes. Ecohydrology is a very exciting science and also very diverse. I'm going to tell you now some few examples among many others. We can solve problems like a scarcity, water scarcity problems for human consumption by looking at how forest is able to catch the little drops from fog. And we build fog collectors and we put them in the windy places like roofs of the houses where water is scarce and the, family, the families can also have an extra water input from fog. We can also um, assess and develop new techniques to, in, the, in the framework of uh, risks and exposure from agro, agrochemicals in developing countries. We are using, for example, earthworms and looking at the behavior, avoidance behavior of these uh, organisms to certain concentrations of pesticides and see how these pesticides might influence and affect the habitat. We also uh, develop um, new, a new technique, de design a new technique to, um, to, to understand where are the, the, the hotspots 
of uh, agrochemicals in using agrochemicals in developing countries where there are not so many equipments and using high absorbent papers and you see here one of our farmers posing for you um, also in ecohydrology we can also uh, evaluate the success of lake restoration by using modeling techniques to evaluate uh, um, a water protection measure, for example, the implementation of sewage treatments or plants and the ban of phosphorus detergents, and this was done in, in Switzerland, to assess uh, what, how much this affects uh, the primary production, so the algae, algae production in lakes. All of these little complex uh, environmental problems and studies uh, will not be successful unless we are able to communicate with other scientists and able to effectively communicate with uh, to communicate our results to local communities resource managers and policy makers maybe now some of you are thinking, I would like to be a professional in ecohydrology. But then you are lucky today because now ecohydrology has been, into, has been um, incorporated in education. In Europe, we have three master programs, one at the University of uh, uh, Lodz in Poland, Freie University Amsterdam, and the Erasmus Mundus by UNESCO, with the consortium between Poland, Germany, uh, Netherlands, Portugal, and Argentina. So with this talk, I, will, I, I hope I brought your vision on what is ecohydrology, what can we do with ecohydrology. Now you can, you can also see that ecohydrology can um, um, improve our ecosystems. And you can also study that if you want to become a professional in three universities in Europe. But three doesn't sound enough for the whole Europe. Now there is a new educational trend that is to start, start uh, training eco-hydrologists from, from ecology and hydrology at undergraduate um, level. And how to do that? We envision to have an integrative, a true integrative curriculum with, uh, with an active learning where students can learn problem-based techniques. Thank you very much.